California, are you finding that you cannot get the returns you seek in the real estate game? Well, I friggin' hope so. Because I don't know why the fuck you would have clicked on this video if you're not in that situation. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly. Taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. I'm here to help you start, build, grow your real estate portfolio, right? This is Holton Wise TV, folks. Holton Wise TV, we do a lot of stuff here. We give you education. We give you access to deals. We try to entertain you. We try to show you the risks. So if all that makes sense, freaking subscribe, man. What are you waiting for, dude? I want my subscriber numbers to go up. That... When I got higher subscribers, my content goes out to more people. That makes me happy. I make more money. And uh, I was trying to think of something that I could give you in exchange for, like, why it makes me happy. Like, I'm happy when I get more money. And then I was about to be like, yo, and then this is why you should do it. But I don't really have anything. All I know is I make more money and I'm happy. So just make me happy. And then I will try to make you happy by teaching you great things about real estate, right? And that's what I'm doing. For a California investor named Spiff, right? I get a lot of people just like Spiff. You guys want to get those cash flow returns, but you can't do it in California. Makes me happy, though, because I sell property in Cleveland, and, you know, the more people who want to buy property in Cleveland, again, the more money I make, and, again, uh, we've already established here that it does make me quite happy. But with people like Spiff, I can make you happy too because I can give you those returns that you seek because this market, the Cleveland market, it's so freaking cheap. It's super cheap, dude. It's ridiculously cheap. The property today, $12,500. That's the amount of cash you need. But what happens in the real estate space with a lot of people, especially people from California, you guys look at these deals in the Cleveland market with those out-of-state eyes where you're like, whoa, dude, all I got to do is put down $12,500. I'm in friggin' San Jose, California, man. I can't get a parking spot for that. That's insane. It's a must. It's a can't-lose situation. Boom, 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 boom. And that's actually not the case, right? A lot of what I do, broker in real estate, I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate. A lot of what I do is selling real estate for landlords like yourselves from California who bought properties in Cleveland thinking they couldn't lose, but in fact they found out that even if the stakes are super low, you could still lose. You could still overpay, right? If a property requires $12,500 of your money, but it should have only required $5,500 of your money, you still made a mistake, you're still going to lose, right? So yeah, stakes are low here, costs are super cheap, but I want to make sure you don't lose. And that's why when I, I do these properties and these analyses and uh, help you guys out, I give you the good, the bad, the ugly. That's why we have the Tenants from Hell show. I want you guys to see that even though the money's small, there are still problems with real estate. There's still issues that come up. And if you buy in the wrong neighborhoods, thinking you got a great deal when you're comparing prices to where you live, you may find out that if you didn't do the proper research, you overpaid and you're still going to lose, right? Because in any real estate, whether it's a million-dollar deal or a $12,500 deal, you still have to make sure you buy it right. And my man Spiff, I've been helping him uh, look at many options because he's new to the Cleveland area. Today is no different. Today is a low-income single-family home, which we're going to jump into the numbers right after this commercial break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's jump right into the property now that you guys are all fitted with your new clothing attire, right? 331 4th Street, Elyria, 44035. 23 days on the market at a price point of 64900 Now, if this particular property had a market rent paying tenant and it was only 64,900 this thing would be long gone it would have been flown off the shelves right what we have here is the opportunity to buy a property at a deeply discounted rate because the situation the selling of the property is not ideal right we have a long term tenant in this property 
This property, it's, you know, it's a little dated, right? You got the tenant. They got a lot of stuff, okay? It's pretty cluttered. It doesn't show well, right? These are all things that are good for us as real estate investors, right? Nobody looks that's going to, you know, want to buy a house. Nobody looks at this picture and goes, whoa, dude, that's what I'm talking about. I envisioned buying a home and this picture is what came to mind, right? Like that doesn't happen, okay? So these things, though, for us as investors, they are all good, right? There's only two kinds of people that could buy a house, right? Two kinds of people are going to buy this house. Owner occupants, people that want to live there, but there's a tenant in there. It looks grimy, cluttered, ugh, doesn't work for them. So half the buyer base gone. It's going to help keep the price low. Next, we have investors like you. Anybody watching this, you're an investor. You want to make money, but the price is not that attractive to you guys because the tenant that's currently there cluttering this up, making all the owner occupants not want it. They've been there forever. I don't know how long exactly, but a long friggin' time. And they're only paying five twenty-five, which is crazy because the market rent on this thing, as it sits, as a two-one, is actually nine hundred a month. If you're getting nine hundred a month under your fixed and variable uh, expense estimates, you should be netting $5,118 a year, and that's with you saving money for future vacancy, saving money for future CapEx, saving money for future repairs and maintenance, right? I got five forty dollars a year being saved towards those things, right? So each one of those line items, five forty, dollars right? So that's, you know, 15 dollars 80 uh, like sixteen twenty dollars a year that I'm not counting as an actual return, but you will realize that now. Keep that in a bank account to save because eventually you'll get a turnover. Eventually you'll have to do CapEx, right? This home, nothing's coming to you new, right? No brand new furnace, no new hot water tank, no roof. Roof, 30 years. That's how long they last. You're probably in the last 10 years of that, I bet, right? That's a $7,000 bill. Furnace, they last 30 years. They cost about three grand. Don't think you got a new furnace. Hot water tank, they, they last about 15 years to cost a grand, right? Don't think you got a new one of those either, right? So you're saving because eventually those big ticket items are going to come, right? But all of that, right, the fact that our occupants can't buy it, the fact that the current rent ain't 900, it's only five and a quarter, that's what allows the price to be low, right? Because, again, it's 64.9. It should have flew, right? It's worth more, right? Should have flow off, flown off the shelves, but it didn't. And I think we could even get that down even further, okay? They're asking 64.9. I want to lowball these folks. I want to try to pick it up for you at 50. If we pick it up for you at 50, you put down 12,500. The bank puts down 37 and a half with a $900 tenant. If you got the existing tenant in there all the way up to 900, that would be a 26% cash on cash return or a 10.2 cap, right? Amazing deal. Makes a lot of sense. Now, let's talk about a couple other things, right? First of all, let's talk about expectations. Going from five and a quarter to 900 with the exact same existing tenant, is it possible? Yes. The best way to do it, the most likely way to get you there is to slowly increase that rent, 50 bucks a year, right? You don't just want to basically double the rent because odds are good the tenant's going to move out. And as we've seen from the pictures, it's a dated home. That would require you to probably put in another ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get it ready to rock to get that new market rate tenant. But... If you go slow, you got a good chance of keeping them in there without having to spend that money, and you'll just make more cash flow as the rent goes up until you ultimately get to your goal. Here is the other thing I want to talk to you about. The reason the market rent is 900 is because it's two bed, one bath, okay? This is a big house, though. If you haven't noticed, this house is actually pretty freaking huge. It's actually a 1,400-square-foot house. Most of the three bedroom, one bathroom homes you see in the Cleveland market are only 1,200 square feet. This sucker is 1,400, okay? This is a huge house. Two ones, normal two ones in the Cleveland market are usually like half the size of this thing. What's going on is up top here, right? Unfinished, right? We could have an extra bedroom, right? You finish off that space, you could be getting your rent up to over $1,000 a month because the home is so big. But, of course, that's going to require money. We would need to see the inspection report to see exactly where we're standing, but don't think you're doing that for probably less than twenty grand, right? So that's just something to consider in the future. But all told, where we're at right now, I think this would be a solid investment 
And I think picking it up at such a discounted price while taking advantage of the current seller situation, right? They're, they're literally marketing their property improperly to every type of buyer, right? Every type of buyer, they're, they're sending them the wrong message, right? I'm an owner-occupant buyer. I want to move into a home with my family that's fresh and clean. Well, I can't do that here because there's a friggin' tenant. I'm Mr. Landlord. I want to make a bunch of money on my investment. I want a return on my dollar. Well, it's not that great right now because you're renting the house to somebody for basically half of what you should, right? So because they're doing that, that allows us to come in and hammer hard and try to pick this sucker up at a huge discount, getting it for 50 k meaning we only have to spend $12,500 of our money. This, folks, this is how you make money in real estate, forcing equity, buying value-add deals, getting situations that are not, getting into investment situations that are not, you know, right there, packaged and beautiful and ready for you. If you want to only buy things that are packaged and beautiful and ready for you, folks, just buy traditional turnkey. But you all know you're paying a premium for that, right? If you want to dig down and get deep, get dirty, and really create some value for yourself and your net worth, these are what the deals look like, okay? They don't look beautiful. They don't look sexy. But that is the point. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.